Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Hi, I'm Judy Strayer and as chair of the local historic district commission, I'm calling this meeting to order at 3.04 p.m. on Monday, June 6th, 2022. Um, based on Governor Baker's executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law chapter 30A, section 20, signed Thursday, March, 20, March 12th, 2020, this hearing and meeting is being held virtually using the Zoom platform. Meeting is being recorded and minutes are being taken as usual. So I'll take roll now. Uh, mm -hmm. Bruce Coldham. Yes. Jim Lumley. I'm here. Peggy Schwartz. <laughs> I'll get back to Peggy, I know she's here. Uh, Rita Wilcox. Here. Uh, here. Uh, Karen Winter. Here. Well, Justin, oops, no, Peggy? that's not. Yep, I'm here. Thank you. Um, and I'm Judy Strayer and I am here. Plus in here now. Okay. <laughs> so oh. we just have one, um, one application today uh, for 46 Sunset Ave, is that correct? Yep, yeah, exactly. So we're actually gonna start with um, Shannon. We're gonna, we're and gonna the, start with Shannon first, okay. Yeah, just because, um, and then at around 3.30, the folks from Amherst College are gonna come yeah. for oh, the okay, great. hearing. Good. Yeah. yeah. Good. Um, so I'm gonna bring Shannon Walsh in as a panelist here. Hopefully that works. There we go. Hi, Shannon. Hi there, can everybody hear me okay? Hi, Shannon. Hi, Shannon. Yes, I can. Yes. Great. Thank you for having me today. And I appreciate you having me go first. My daughter has a 3.30 appointment that I tried to reschedule, but it would have been like two months from now. So yeah. thank you. <laughs> um, so as, as Ben had mentioned, I'm here to talk about the update to the Amherst Historic Preservation Plan. And thank you for having me as, as part of your meeting today. Um, I just wanted to first introduce myself. I'm, I'm Shannon Walsh. I'm the Historic Preservation Planner for the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. I've been in that capacity since early 2017, and I've worked on some different plans and more recently resilient master plans, historic and cultural resource chapters. And I'm very excited to be working with Amherst over the next year. Um, so I'm meeting with you and I'm meeting with um, the other commission, the Amherst Historical Commission, and then meeting with various groups over the summer, doing a lot of fact finding. So I had sent Ben some kind of preliminary questions if anybody had a chance to look them over, but just trying to kind of get a sense of, of where your commission is at. So my first question was, what are your commission's main goals and expectations for the updated preservation plan for Amherst? And I'm just going to type if, that, if you don't mind, just to make sure that I have everything accounted for that we discuss. Mm. Anybody? <laughs> or do you have no thoughts or expectations? So I, I can I can also provide a little bit of background, just the 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 utility, I guess, of the preservation plan. I think Shannon, so there's a 2005 Amherst preservation mm -hmm. plan. I think that is we've picked and choose over the past 15, 17 years now, we've picked and choose different recommendations from that preservation plan, one of, one of which was to establish local historic districts in, in Amherst. And so we've, you know. This commission now exists because of the preservation plan. That was a recommendation from the 05 plan. And so the goal for the update to the preservation plan is basically to take an inventory of where we're at and you know progress from the 2005 plan and then you know meet with different commission staff members, constituencies in town um, to get a better sense of goals and um, priorities for the next, you know, call it 15 years. And then Shannon will develop an amazing set of recommendations and implementation um, matrices kind of thing to better understand how we can, what are the goals and then how we can establish and, and, and implement those goals. Um, so we're, you know, hoping to come away with a very useful, you know, document that we can um, kind of guide the work of the, both the historical commission, but the local historic district as well. Yes, and, and most recently I am somewhat familiar with Amherst. I've worked on the East Village inventory form, updating it and expanding the East Village National Register District. 
And um, we've also been working on the depot district update and also the expansion to the Dickinson district. And I did a historic district appeal decision, um, which you might remember. <laughs> so um, yeah, I would just love to hear your thoughts if you have any thoughts about this plan, if you um, have any expectations or, or things that you wanna maybe move to the forefront as we get started. And we will revisit this as we go. This is just kind of a first pass at talking. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe I'm, I'm gonna go ahead to my second question just maybe to get started. So has the role of your commission evolved since the 2005 plan? Now your commission was actually created in 2012. Is that right? So it's certainly evolved and because you're newer than the plan. Um, but how would you say your commission has evolved since it was created in 2012? Well, it's expanded in uh, at least the uh, it, it, uh, um, Jim and I are the longest serving members currently of the six of us, but neither of us was involved well, I can't speak for you, Jim. I, I, I think I'm correct, but, but I wasn't involved in any of the uh, run-up, uh, the work that was done. Several of the previous members, I think uh, um, Jennifer, if not Jennifer, her husband, certainly Marianne. Uh, so the earlier members of this commission were people who had uh, worked hard to establish uh, the uh, essentially the, the bylaw or the, the commission itself and um, had done a lot of uh, individual work to validate the need for, for this by, by researching specific properties and so forth. But uh, that was not true of me. So I've really come on with a view of just uh, continuing the, the, or representing the, uh, discharging the goals and objectives of the commission uh, without knowing too much about uh, how it was established in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, but I do know that it was established initially at the Dickinson Historic uh, District on the other side of, um, on, the, uh, on the eastern half of our district, and then was sub subsequently uh, expanded to the, Dickens, to the uh, Lincoln Sunset. And there is currently a deliberation as to whether it would be whether the Sunset Lincoln, uh, the, the, the eastern edge of the Sunset Lincoln district as it uh, abuts Kendrick Park and perhaps a little north up uh, North Pleasant Street would be expanded because those properties were not included because I think it was just deemed to be a, a, a stretch politically to make the argument. And now that we've established the district and it's, and people can see how the the, uh, this commission is behaving, um, hopefully responsibly, reasonably, diligently, and uh, so forth, that they think uh, that now it's a good idea to expand it a little bit because we can be trusted. Uh, mm -hmm. That's the notion. So, but that's uh, my sense of how it's evolving, if that was your question, mm -hmm. Shan. But this one, there's probably other people. I noticed Greta's got a hand up. <laughs> Great, thanks, go ahead. Hey Shannon, I was going to say we also made it slightly easier for people say that wanted to put a mini split in to do it without going through us. So we streamlined some of the decisions. Mm -hmm. Okay, how did you do that? It's a good point. Just, oh, go, just discuss them and voted on it. Well, okay, the way we yeah. did it was yeah. to establish uh, certain. Um, certain types of applications that were like not applicable. Um, well, well, they were applicable, but they're, they're, they were, you know, we had take, we had, uh, we had deliberated on, let's say five uh, applications related to heat pump, exterior compressor condenser units. And we established after doing that five times that there were certain criteria that we would always look at and we established that we could uh, stipulate what those were. And, and if the building commissioner was uh, agreeable, uh, he could just see whether those criteria applied. And if they did, 
um, then the, it, it saved everybody time. It saved the applicants time, it saved us time. And, uh, and so the, the building commissioner was willing. So part of it has to do with the building commissioner being willing to um, do a, to take a small amount of, I guess you call it responsibility for this uh, based on um, a directive, if you like, or an mm -hmm. agreement or an understanding that we develop with him. Would that be an accurate uh, reflection, Ben, of, of the main way in which we, uh, Senator, how we did it? We did it by just passing off some of the, uh, the, 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 the um, mm -hmm. responsibility yeah, so you, onto yeah, the building, right. onto the zoning, onto the, onto the, the um, zoning. Uh, building commissioner, yeah. Building so commissioner. You, you set forth what the criteria were, it, now the building commissioner has it. When the yes. application goes before the building commissioner, yes. it can get decided there without having Safe, to come yes. before your And paper. they're very similar and repetitive okay. things like uh, oh, uh, caps great. on chimneys, for example, was another mm -hmm. that we did. And there's a couple of- uh, It's in the uh, rules and regulations for okay. the local- Okay, that's great. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pass that on to Springfield. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> I, I have, oh, sorry, great. No, go ahead. Go no, ahead. okay. Uh, hi, I'm Judy Stryer. Um, mm -hmm. I had a question about, you mentioned a few other districts you're working on in town. Mm -hmm. And um, is that something that, um, you know, town citizens are working on and then bringing it to you or are you as the commission, um, the PVPC? We were, I, this goes back to 2015. So it's been, it's been quite a while and it was a CPA funded, I believe. Um, so I'm not sure if the historical commission, but it was actually mm -hmm. my predecessor, the contract originated with her. Okay. And um, it's from us, from myself and Bonnie Parsons, who used to be mm -hmm. my job at PVPC, if any of you ever came across Bonnie, we submitted these three National Register nominations to the Mass Historic Commission well over a year ago. Um, so we're not working on it with, with um, residents. It came through the Amherst government, through the Historical mm -hmm. Commission, CPA okay. funded project. But that's just my way of saying I, I'm not just... I, I am somewhat familiar with Amherst and I've been working on documenting Amherst, including I walked almost the entire length of Bay Road <laughs> at wow. reparking my car. But um, just to know, I, I do have some. No, I just I was trying to document, you know, a lot of the buildings mm. along the way. So, yes. Um, well, my, my question Did about I that answer is, your question. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, that's great. But uh, um, and the reason I asked that question is because I'm. Um, one of the newer members, actually, I'm probably the newest member of the commission, um, mm -hmm. and I do not live in the historic, either historic district, mm -hmm. but I live in a district that I think should be considered historic. And I, as I'm going around town, I see other districts that for various reasons, I think would value from being considered and not even necessarily old historic, maybe there, uh, it's, a, it's a neighborhood of mid-century houses mm -hmm. or something, but you know, I'm just wondering how do we start that process of looking at other neighborhoods because yeah. you know, like um, Greta brought, you brought up like overhead power lines and I thought that's an issue. And I know it's an issue for where I live too, that people complain. Well, we're about in the more. right place because that is something that we could look at in this plan and identify neighborhoods that, you know, would be something that should be considered for either, it's always starts with documentation Right. future documentation or updated documentation. So that that's a very helpful thing to know at this stage. Um, okay, thanks. Yeah, thank you. Go ahead. Shannon, um, when you ask us to think about things, one of the things I thought about were visions of what I'd like for the district and mm -hmm. underground wiring is one of them that jumped to mind because they're really, we're on the way to UMass and every time UMass needs more, um, technology, they run it through down Lincoln Avenue and they're really large, unattractive power lines. And is that something that um, hmm. that you have advice on how to go about having the district have underground wiring? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. I think, again, that's something that we should take a look at in this plan. If it's something that, that you feel we should be considering for the future, who the stakeholders would be, what the action steps would be. Um, if it's possible, how, if so, how we get there. Right, and how Did funding you, might be available. Yeah. yeah, Did you have something to say to that, Ben? You're just nodding. 
no. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So these are all the points that uh, things that you know weren't brought up in 2005 because there were other focuses that we should definitely be looking at as we're kind of developing the framework of this plan. Mm-hmm. Is there is there a place for us as we kind of you know develop ideas to mm-hmm. like kind of send them to you or yeah should we as a group kind of you know formulate you know, um, you know, kind of short-term goals, long-term goals, that type of thing. Or... Yeah, yeah. This, this, I think, is just a first pass of introduction. So I'll definitely come back to you. But I think that it would be helpful. Maybe you could have it on your agenda. Um, I, I could send questions to you or through Ben. And at the end of a meeting, after you've done your regular applications, we could consider continue to refine what you're thinking about. Um, and then I kind of we have a we have a general timeline for the way that's planned. This process is going to go, it started May 1st, and it's going to go through April 30th of 2023. So we do have a good amount of time to make sure that we're um, getting everything that we want to get into this plan. But we, I will work on that with Ben, the best way to refine how you could communicate with me and I could communicate with you. But I do think it makes sense for you to do it as your, as a group public discussion, and then the notes could get sent back to me. I'm going to make a note for myself too. Mm-hmm. I'll say something if uh, I know Peggy and, and Jim, uh, I think Karen, I would defer to any one of the three of you because you haven't spoken yet. But I'll go ahead. Go ahead. Um, one, uh, speaking as the, the person on the committee who's the, uh, the architect, the way this committee is structured, and I guess that was done from the beginning and it wasn't changed, but there's a there's a representative from the real estate uh, professional community and there's a representative from the architectural community. Um, both of those uh, positions at the moment, well, actually, I'm not sure. Jim's, uh, I, I, you're not retired really, or you you mightn't have been when you started. But the the the, the situation is, of course, that trying to get uh, professionals onto these bodies means that they. Uh, it's hard to do if they still want to conduct business and around town mm-hmm. because uh, you know uh, a lot of uh, two or three occasions or in the past six years or five years that I've been on uh, uh, projects from my former office have come forward. Now, if I was still on you know working there, I I would it, I would probably say no, I can't be on this committee because it's going to interfere with my job. So I think mm-hmm. the first thing is that. It seems to work to try and get uh, retired professionals on, and uh, and and we really should make sure, I think, that the uh, that that that, um, that that the requ- the requirement for uh, an architectural representative uh, doesn't require them to be registered in the state. Um, and the reason I say that is because if somebody had a a contentious, you know, I've I've got 50 years of experience. I was registered in Massachusetts and all of the other New England states and New York. I was really fully, firmly, professionally anchored, credibly. But when I retired, I let those rest- registrations go progressively because, you know, you to, to maintain them, you have to do all sorts of continuing education and people like me don't want to do that. So they let them go. But I'm still very capable of, uh, of, of performing this role. But if it wasn't clear and we had a rendered decision that was controversial in some way, the, the whole process could be jeopardized by somebody, uh, what's the word, uh, appealing based on Bruce is not a real architect because he let his registration lapse. And given that the kind of people that will want to come onto these committees really are going to be people like me. And given that people like me will let their registrations lapse, we should be very clear that an architect for a position on this board does not require that they are currently registered, just that they have been previously registered Mm -hmm. in the state of Massachusetts. I think clarity on that point, if it isn't already, uh, would be ultimately helpful because I can just see a problem coming down not just with us in this town but with you know any other towns in your 
That's number one comment. Number two comment is um, when I first was approached to come on and I was being interviewed, I said, um, I said, here's my view of what historic preservation means. And my view is that it's not uh, the goal of this commission. That's not my goal on this commission to uh, lock the, uh, the district into um, its history from 2012 backwards, that there will be you know, the, the, the story of, 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 of you know, the, the way in which the community grows and so forth, in 50 years from now, we'll have history that relates in the, in the, in the 50 years to come. And so I don't take the view that we are necessarily maintaining literal faith with forms and so forth that are you know, our, our historic back from 2012. This is a bumbling explanation. I'm there. Not everybody on this commission, I think, would agree with me. We would have, but but well, they might agree in principle. But the way in which it's discharged might be refuted. But the the thing is that there's a tension, I think, in these commissions, um, based on how much um, of what people are doing should we applaud and approve as appropriate. Let's say someone came to us with a really um, novel, uh, new, original architectural design for a house on a lot or an addition on a house that was completely at, uh, out of um, kilter with the historic, with, with the with the with the context, the current context, but that it seemed to. Uh, speak to an original architectural solution based on you know recognizing the current needs are changing with the new materials these days there are new circumstances associated with energy use and so forth mm -hmm. there are new circumstances associated with family size and how people uh, raise their kids and and where grandparents live and all these things are changing all the time and my view is that we have to move with it and that the appropriateness mm -hmm. of what we are saying is uh, tracks this and will mean that we will make decisions about things that are in some people's minds um, kind of at odds with the so-called historical context. Right, and appropriate that, appropriate as it could be a very subjective so, thing. So yes, and so mm -hmm. the so I would think if you're um, writing something in the last year of guidelines for people like us and others related to that. Um, the well, what if I, if I can just interrupt you helpful. real quick, just because I want to make sure we get to all of our questions. Amherst does not currently have design guidelines. Is that right? Not in this no. district. Okay, no. so that's something that I think would be a recommendation just because um, I know Northampton, for example, I, I, oh, I did a historic district appeal in Northampton and I relied heavily on those design guidelines that they had. And it's really coming up with language about additions, new construction, being compatible, not to put a false impression of something that's older when it's newer, but it having that to point to when you're trying to make those difficult decisions, I think can be very helpful. Mm -hmm. It's true, but you know, take a, a, a hypothetical. Um, uh, Frank Lloyd Wright in 1920 might not be able to have done uh, all sorts of mm -hmm. uh, buildings that we would uh, die to preserve now. Yep. Oh, um, no, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. The only so thing I that's want... different, though, is if it's in a yeah. local historic district, you do have to follow the Secretary of the Interior standards. New construction is a gray area. Um, so I've... I think the design guidelines that you come up with and that Amherst votes on would be something that would at least, you know, give give it an easier place for people to go when you're trying to decide these difficult applications. I suppose but I understand so. what you're saying about yeah. about. I, I've worked on Nantucket, where the design guidelines are possibly as strenuous, strict as any uh, precise. Well, it, it depends. That's why they're unique as the community that creates them. So yeah. Um, but Jen Doherty, who's the new 
Chris Skelly was the former local government coordinator. So Jen Doherty, we were just talking about this in Springfield because the McKnight Local Historic District, they have an empty lot and there was a, a lot of um, disagreement about should the house that's gonna go there really look like it really matches the houses next to it or, and it, it, it just was a very interesting conversation, which again, Springfield, they have eight or nine or 10. They have so many individual building local historic districts, but they have at least seven large local historic districts mm. and they have no design guidelines. And it doesn't mm. come up that often, but when it does, if you don't have design guidelines and you're trying to work with a property owner, um, it can be difficult. So I think that that would be something that we should definitely discuss as a possible action step to have something like that in place for when you're trying to make those decisions. Um, uh, let me see. One other thing. Yes. Oh, go ahead. So, so I would say yes, so long as there is a preamble of goals and objectives that would allow these commissions to exercise some degree of discretionary. Uh, well, that's why you're all sitting here, all different, yeah. different voices and opinions, but yeah. just to have kind of a basis of, you know, like you said, with the chimney caps and things like that, um, what, what is the baseline of what is okay and not okay? And then the discussion evolves from there. Um, so are there any major concerns that I should know about at this point that you're seeing from where you sit related to historic preservation in Amherst? We talked a little bit about electrical lines um, and you know a lot, of, a lot of applications coming into you, but realizing that there was a more streamlined way to do it and also make homeowners happy. Um, what were you? What were you going to say? I'm sorry, you just had your hand raised. Oh, I was Good just going to say. Oh, we're also um, in our part of the district bordering the university, so we're also um, hoping that landlords keep their property property up because mm -hmm. there's student housing. Um, yeah, they would love to. Yeah, we talked about that a little. Ben gave me a tour and we were talking about a lot of absentee landlords. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure that's a tricky thing when those houses also are under ordinance. Yeah. Go ahead, Judy. Um, uh, yeah, I would say that I would say that's an issue in a lot of town, but also um, I think the pressure on downtown for being used for student housing versus um, you know, retail restaurants. Um, okay. There seems to be, there's a lot of tension, I think, between, especially the area north, I guess, is it north of Kendrick Park? Um, you know, and, and part of it that I think is being driven by the development that happened on the other side of East Pleasant, the huge mm -hmm. buildings, you know. Um, and What's your opinion about that stretch? Is that one of the stretches that you said wasn't included in a district that the, uh, I know that, that uh, no, drove across, me around there. No, across the street, the part mm -hmm. where a group of us are looking at now is what was not included. It's adjacent yep. to the Lincoln Sunset District, yep. uh, North, North Pleasant, um, but not wanting to see what's on one side mirrored on the other side, mm -hmm. you know, it, just in terms of scale and use and, you know, and just being inappropriate and having that put pressure on the buildings as historic buildings, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay, before I have to jump off, does anybody else have anything to add at this time? And this is just a real brief introductory discussion um, as we develop. We do have a, a pretty good outline for the plan already that Ben, modeled on a mass historical commission plan. So as we refine it, we will definitely revisit and ask more questions, but we'll, Ben and I will come up with a good way with, if you have your weekly meetings and you have just on your agenda discussion about the preservation plan, and then if anything comes up, it could be conveyed to me and I'll make sure that it gets in our notes. Mm -hmm. Does anybody month, else have any month, comments? Month, monthly oh. meetings. Also. Monthly, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, go ahead, Jim. Uh, Shannon, do you have any materials that, uh, even though they're in draft form, that you could send us to give us an idea of what uh, some guidelines? Sure. Um, okay. Let me just. I will send you the outline that we're that mm -hmm. is kind of the framework. I also am going to send the Amherst Historical Commission some sample plans from other communities we're, we're working on fine. They didn't have any that they had offhand that they wanted us to model this on. So I'm gonna to try to find some 
So I'll send that to your group as well to take a look at. Um, also, including maybe design guidelines, because we could take a look at some of the design. Like I know Salem just- That would be helpful. Yeah, so we'll just take a look at some of these model plans and you can you know, pick out things that you like in them that would maybe inform what we're recommending to do in Amherst. Does that sound good? But I'll send you a draft of what the overall outline is. And as we work on drafts, because I have a schedule of when we're gonna be submitting the drafts, we'll send them to your commission as well if you'd like to take a read and give any feedback. Yeah. I, I, have a, I have a question. Perfect. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, in terms of the number, the members of the commission where some of us live in the historic district, some of us don't, does that have any bearing on the makeup? The, the, are there guidelines for how many members of the commission should be, would be uh, acceptable or? Uh, to sit on your commission? Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't, I'll have to look at your ordinance. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. And I look at what the state says, but. Yeah, well, cer certainly people who live in the district would have one sense of what, what mm -hmm. might be suitable as opposed to people who are passing through for one reason or mm -hmm. another. Yeah, that's um, a good question. Hmm. Okay, before I jump off and let you finish your meeting, does anybody have any more questions or comments? Okay. All right. Well, thank you again. I, I appreciate you letting me take the time to speak with you. And uh, we. I look forward to working with you over the next 11 months. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank take you care. So much. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. So we'll, uh, you haven't seen the last of Shannon. We'll have <laughs> a few more uh, meetings uh, or many more over the next year. And we'll definitely, um, you know, keep drafts flowing and information flowing between the commission and Shannon and hmm. put together a good plan. So I look forward to kind of just so, seeing that come to fruition. Then uh, just for clarification here, when you, uh, you know, I, I said I'd never heard of the yeah. uh, preservation plan. I didn't know we had one uh, and, and it wasn't given, uh, you know, it wasn't discussed or referenced yeah. or, or delivered as part of a package of, of base documents for us. That leads me to imagine or wonder whether it's, it's it, uh, how relevant is, uh, I haven't read it yet. Um, I've opened it, I've scanned it, but I haven't looked at it closely. Um, is what Shannon's uh, doing or advising um, is, is the updating and redrafting of this plan or is she doing something different? Yep, yeah, she's up, updating the plan, basically, um, you know, taking an inventory of what's been done since the last plan was developed and then setting the goals for, you know, the next 10, 15 years. Mm -hmm. um, I think the, the the current plan that was developed in 2005 um, is a little bit just, uh, I want to, you know, it still has some relevance, but I think a lot has changed in 15 years. For example, CPA was just getting started when that plan was written. So like there's, now we have a much more important and useful tool for historic preservation in the Community Preservation Act. That's one example, you know, now we have two local historic districts. So how do we build on that now? So I think there's, the current plan just isn't that useful to us anymore. So the goal is to kind of get a plan that provides guidance for the next 10, 15 years. Um, and that will be useful, hopefully. Um, so yeah, I think maybe in 2000, you know, in the early days of the, once the preservation plan was developed in 2005, I'm sure it was shared widely, but it's kind of fallen out of, you know, it's not as refer re referenced as often anymore. Um, I'm just looking at the master plan and trying to find any reference to it in the master plan and uh, um, which was done um, around the same time or at least right. it started because yeah. I think we finished the first master plan effort that I suppose you would have to say ended in failure. Um, <laughs> Okay. Uh, yes, it's, yeah. it's, I'm looking at the natural and cultural resources section of the, uh, of the master plan. And it's, as far as I can see, it's, it's not even referenced. So it's, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 a, a, it's yeah. a real sleeper of a document. 
yeah. apparently. Um, yeah. So, so that being the case, uh, we one would hope that it would be uh, elevated in its uh, prominence, and certainly uh, when the next. Uh, draft of the master plan or the next update of the master plan and so forth, it should be folded into that because that thing is a 35 page document with a, about another 50 pages of appendices. So it's, it's about the same size document as the master plan itself, but it doesn't mm -hmm. even, it, it's unreferenced. It's, you know, it's really odd. Yeah. I'm not sure how that happened, but. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, so we have uh, guests in attendance for the um, public hearing. So do you want, should we get started with that? Uh -huh. Yeah, all right, so let me, I'll bring Seth in and then Judy, if you just wanna call the public. So hearing. Am I gonna recall to order? Or yeah, just open, I guess, open the public hearing. That's the term. Hey Seth. That is um, is Stephen Baker in the in the room? Do you he see? Is, yep. Yeah. yeah, and there's anyone else from your team? And then I don't know if Tom Davies is in attendance. I'm actually not um, in Amherst right now, outside of Baltimore, so I'm not okay. anywhere near. Um, and um, uh, do you see a Rachel Bellinger? Yeah, if you could elevate her as well. Okay. Thank you. And Tom, if he happens to, to join. I know he okay. Tom has a four, four o'clock. So. so we have to formally open the public. Yeah, are we, are, we, are we ready? Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, um, I'm Judy Strayer and as chair of the Local Historic District Commission, I'm calling this meeting to order at 3.40 on Monday, um, June 6th, 2022. Um, based on Governor Baker's order suspending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law, General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20, signed Thursday, March 12th, 2020, this hearing and meeting is being held virtually using the Zoom platform. The meeting is being recorded and minutes are being taken. So we only have one, um, Presentation from Amherst College for Sunset Ab. Um, mm -hmm. So Seth, do you are you going to present or Stephen Baker is going to? Okay. Can I share my content? Yes. And just uh, uh, I want to just make sure everything got kicked off. I'm actually going to be getting on a plane to come back to Amherst here momentarily, uh, so or leaving for the airport. So. I'm gonna to have to uh, jump off in a few minutes, um, but just as a, as a brief overview, um, the college did purchase 46 Sunset at the end of last year, and it is intended to be the residence for the incoming president who was announced last week uh, named Michael Elliott, although this started way before um, that was announced. And, um, and I'll let Stephen uh, take the presentation away, but suffice it to say the house, um, needs a whole lot of work. And so it is our, it is our um, endeavor to provide it with all new mechanical, electrical, plumbing systems, um, almost a complete gut demo on the inside um, in order just to bring it, it's got knob and tube wiring. Most of the stuff that I know is not under your jurisdiction, but suffice it to say, we're attempting to uh, you know, give it the renovation that it has really needed for, for some time. Um, and then the exterior, in, uh, in some cases, in, in pretty poor disrepair. So, um, you know, new new gutters and new uh, roofing material to match the existing, but still, um, it needs a lot of uh, assistance. That's way overdue. So, I will. With that said, um, I'll hang on for as long as I can. But I will let Stephen Baker, who is our illustrious architect, and then also from my team, Rachel Bollinger, she's a new project manager for Amherst College. So, if there are questions of from that about about that need to be go to the college and not to Stephen. Uh, Rachel will hang on for for the rest yes. of the meeting. So good afternoon. Uh, has everybody had a chance to? Uh, did everybody receive copies of the submission? So are you familiar with what we're doing? Yes. 
Okay, fantastic. So I will then just slightly uh, uh, graze over the surface of the mechanical systems that are on the exterior of the house. Uh, we're, we're either trying to eliminate them or tidy them up. Um, and so you can see they're, they're pointed out here. Uh, there are, there's an emergency generator which exists currently. Uh, it's all shrouded in plantings right now. Both, both, the, uh, both sides of the house have uh, significant enough landscaping that you can't even see the mechanical systems. Um, uh, but there is a transfer switch on the street side that we're taking away to put inside the house and clean up that whole area. Uh, with that, I will move on to the elevations. In the elevations, we're going to be trying to replace in kind, for the most part, on the front of the house and the, and the right and left sides, uh, with windows very much uh, matching the look and feel of what's there now, but now insulated uh, and uh, 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 nicely operating and such. There was one small uh, modification that we were we were hoping to make here is that for some reason on this facade, the front facade. This window that goes to the living room is of size X, and the one to the kitchen is four inches smaller in height. And we just thought, as much work that has gone into this elevation, it seems that it'd be nice if they were uh, the kitchen uh, area could have as much daylight as possible. So that was one of the uh, requests that we had. Um, any any questions on that matter? Not for me. Okay. okay. Uh, and then on the on the uh, at some point in time, probably in the late later sixties, there was an addition put on the back side of the house uh, that didn't keep to the true architectural style of the windows. You can see it here, uh, and and our hope is to come up with a window style that matches the original in a, in a way that makes this addition when we our, our goal is that when we get through with the renovation that you'd actually assume that this addition portion might have been part of the original home um, and so you can see here these modern sort of uh, split windows and through here bypass would be exchanged for these double hungs mm -hmm. and then as we move forward you can see the back has some very large picture windows, which we've uh, tried to break up in a module that was sympathetic to the lines of the house and uh, uh, more in character with the original architecture of the house. Same with the, the, uh, uh, the hip roof up and through here, hip dormer. We would change it as well. Um, and then on, excuse me. Uh, and then you can see here on the side, again, the modern windows and then the traditional to look more like the original. And in the, there's, this is a, a passenger elevator in here. Uh, and instead of being, being these larger windows here, we thought it'd be more appropriate to create something smaller to let daylight in, but allow for privacy uh, without having to introduce curtains or window treatments. Okay. Yeah. And just to be clear for members of the commission, this, this rear side actually doesn't face the public way. So, and it's not visible from any public way. So it's technically out of the, the jurisdiction, but um, obviously appreciate Stephen sharing the, the full, full scope of the project. So Ben, for clarity, the rear side is the north side. Is that correct? North elevation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. This is the street elevation in through here. Yeah. Um, just a quick clarification on that. The street facing elevation is east. These are um, mislabeled because of the orientation of our, our drawings being different than the cardinal direction. So the uh, that's, that street was where is I was east. headed. So thank you. Sorry, you are. Sorry about Rear that. is west. Um, what you're seeing at the bottom of the page here labeled as east is the north elevation. Uh -huh. All right, yeah, I was, I was a little confused in my head, <laughs> but yeah. I trusted you guys. <laughs> so the north, the, the bottom elevation on this page, labeled east, is really the rear. Oh, hold on. No. Uh, no, I beg your pardon. The, uh, the, 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 the south this elevation is the east elevation. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, south equals east. That, that, that helps. This is the elevation that faces the street. Yeah. Are we ready for questions? 
And then I want to talk to you about one more point. Okay. So what we had discovered um, was this, this fireplace here um, didn't have a flue coming out of it. And so we were wondering what it was for, thought maybe it was for the furnace. And it turns out it's uh, completely ornamental uh, and there's been no attachments to it whatsoever. Uh, and so uh, we're suggesting uh, because of the way the kitchen wants to open up into the living room, that we might get permission to take that away. This would be the look of it after the other, the fireplace is removed or the chimney is removed. Um, and so for your consideration, this is probably the most major uh, change to the facade of the house. And it was, uh, it was, it, it was never a functioning fireplace. Your, your view is, I guess that it was put there to somehow balance, but it's not even symmetrical when it is there. <laughs> exactly. So we're a little questioning just Why what it's all about. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. uh, so uh, yeah, it, we, 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 uh, we've broken the fireplace open to find out that there is a flue to make it be less expensive to build, um, <laughs> but it never had anything attached into it. Hmm. Golly, what an amazing! And what was supporting it? Uh, well, it goes all it goes all the way down to the basement. Oh, it does. Oh, yeah. I see. Yeah. Oh well, I can see why you want to get rid of it. Um, <laughs> we appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. Well, I. I in. Uh, I. I, I well, uh, we'll 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 talk about it and so forth. But I, at least I understand what you're trying to do, and certainly from a common sense point of view, why. Um, I had a question just uh, looking at the drawings. Uh, the, the is it are, are these uh, woven corners of the uh, not woven but but it is are there no corner boards on the building or are they just not. They are woven. They are woven shingle corners, and then there's okay. also uh, stucco corners. Yeah. So it's so it's stucco below and and shingles above. Is that yes? I, yes. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And to that to that point, real real quick, Bruce, we are proposing. Um, replacement frames in order to, the way that the stucco is a, was applied, it's applied over the existing frame and to get the existing frames out uh, would require that we take about six inches of stucco around every window. Yes. And, and it's a real, um, for lack of a better word, it's a real odd textured stucco. It's, it's got a lot of texture to it that there have been historic patches to it that are quite noticeable. And yeah. so we're trying to avoid uh, any more noticeable patches, especially a ring around every window. And, and if you were to, if you were to, I mean, you could theoretically, and you probably thought about this, um, put um, casing uh, around the window to make up, to, to, to allow you to- We did make a, not a consider that. Because it was, I can see, I can think of reasons why you, I mean, it's, it's a brutal piece of work. It, you might not be able to re resurrect it uh, satisfactorily because the stucco might chip out. You don't know whether you can do it. Um, and you know, yeah, I, 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 I think this, it's good to know that you're basically inserting um, new uh, frames for the windows, uh, sorry, sashes for the windows units inside the existing window frames. Um, and that's true of the top as well, or just the- Yeah, uh, it wouldn't have to be, but uh, in a desire to make every window appear the same, uh, we are proposing replacement frames, except for, I think, the back that maybe the back um the back windows are the only back new windows okay. right but, but most of those are being replaced yeah. yeah and from our point of view uh, 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 as a historic district commission we, we we would probably prefer that um 
uh, I would think, because it's it's uh, it's less intrusion into the existing building. I'll let others on the commission uh, ask questions related to that. I think I understand what you're doing fairly well, but I'm not sure that others necessarily would because this is a rather technical piece. Okay. And so let's help make sure that folks understand what we're talking about and, and uh, uh, they're able to, then able to render a, a decision. Is, is everybody clear about what uh, Stephen has said? No, I'm not. Okay. Um, Stephen, let me explain what I think you are, and then you can say it is, but um, Karen, the, uh, of course, you can't see my, uh, my cursor that I'm wiggling around here, but the, the lower floor of the building, which you see as being white, is untextured, no horizontal lines, just blank, all of that is stucco, that's existing yes. stucco. And above that, the horizontal lines are existing shingles. shingles. Uh, the lower window, the stucco, the original stucco goes right up against the original frame and is nicely locked. The stucco and the frame are presumably more or less nicely locked together, um, let's say. So what the applicant wants to do is to retain that, um, that satisfactory uh, existing situation and so that means they're keeping the frame and the stucco in they're not changing the stucco they're not changing the frame they're just working with the uh, the windows sashes you know those things that move that hold the glass um, they're just working with those they're replacing those inside the existing frame and that's what we're being asked to consider okay because we feel like the alternative but what you said is exactly right, but we feel like the inter alternative would produce results that are counterproductive to the intent of trying to retain so much of the original character. Because we would either have to do something like was just suggested and trim out every window in wood, which that trim doesn't exist right now, or we'd have to attempt to match the stucco, which um, I'm not convinced we can do com well. Yeah. Okay. From my point of view, as the architectural representative of the committee, it seems to me, I'm speaking now to my commission colleagues, it seems to me that that is the prudent uh, course of action from a design and, and, and a re restoration point of view. So I, I, would, I would counsel that we should support that approach. I, I apologize. I have to leave, but I'm sure you are in great hands with my colleagues. So yeah, thanks. So. Thanks. Safe travels. Thank you. Um, I would just say if there's a did we did we lose Greta? Greta? Let me bring her back in. Um, Looks like if there's not. any if there's not any more uh, commission or comments, we can open it up for a public comment. Um, let me make sure. Does anyone else on the commission have uh, questions or comments for the architect? Um, I guess there's a, there's a question, um, Stefan, when where you've uh, where you're patching the uh, roof where that existing chimney was right there. Yes. Um, I imagine that you're therefore having to take off all the shingles. You're putting a new roof on. Is that correct? It's it's, it's time. Yeah. So we're, uh, and that that new roof is uh, is more or less matching what's there, or, or yes. Okay. Okay, that's it for me. I think uh, Ben. Oh, Judith. I'm sorry. Anybody else? Okay. Um, can we open it for public comments now? Yeah, sure. So um, any member of the public who's in attendance, you can click the raise hand button uh, at the bottom of your screen to make a comment and we will call on you. It looks like we have one uh, with Mr. Ken Rosenthal who will allow to talk. Um, Ken, you should be able to unmute. Yeah. Yes, thank you very much. My name is Ken Rosenthal. 
I live at 53 Sunset Avenue, which is almost directly across the street from this subject house. Uh, this house was purchased by Professor Amherst College physics professor Bruce Benson and his young bride, Lucy Benson, about 70 years ago with a loan from Amherst College. So it's rather poetic that it's come back to Amherst College now. Uh, Bruce died some time ago and Lucy lived in it until she died last summer. So for 70 years, it's been occupied by essentially the same couple. And while Lucy has done a wonderful job, had done a wonderful job of maintaining it, it certainly needed upgrades as the college has discovered. And so I want to uh, go on record as supporting what the college is proposing to do here. It's not only going to maintain this property uh, as, as well as Lucy did, but it's going to bring the character, uh, make, improve the character. It's going to improve the appearance and um, I can tell the commission that the work that the college has been doing so far, which is mostly interior and then some landscaping, has been very respectful of the neighbors. So uh, the, the plans that you're seeing, I think are very consistent with what the neighbors would like, at least this neighbor, speaking for myself, would like. And so far the college is uh, handling its renovations in a very respectful way. So. I want to go on record supporting what is being proposed to you today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other members of the public who wish to make a comment? Looks like we're good. Yeah. Well, with that, I suppose I should move to close the public hearing. Is that the next appropriate step? Yep. Yes. Okay, so moved. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> We have to vote on that, right? Yes. Do we have? Is there any um, any more discussion or um, comments? Well, I just want to add that I think it it, it definitely the particularly the windows, but pretty much everything the college is doing is a is an upgrade in appearance, and bringing it back into the style in which it uh, it deserves. Great, thank you. My only concern is that, that the first house that we lived in here up in Pelham was about, was it a, a, a cottage-ish house and the storm, the, um, the storm windows that were, removable, were replaceable, really, they, they wouldn't have matched. If, they, if it were an old house, it wouldn't have matched. These look sort of similar to me uh, what I'm looking at here, I just would hate for the windows to sort of be at odds with the historicity of the house. I'm not sure if any of the architects would have a better sense of, of that than, than I'm such a, a lay person in terms of how, how these details play out. So uh, Bruce or Jim, any thought about the windows? Well, the uh, point of order on this one, I think, uh, Peggy, is that I move to close the public hearing. If that's successful and oh. we vote to do so, then we have discussion amongst the, the commissions. Oh. Uh, so we, yeah. we shouldn't. But oh. if we need to uh, ask more questions of the architect, we could. But, but typically, we've, uh, oh, okay. you know, the architect would stay. And if we simply have questions uh, to ask, I'm sure we can do it after the public hearing has been uh, closed. OK. <clears throat> corrected and well I just didn't want to have the the motion to close the public hearing sitting on the table while we did okay. the did the next thing that we do after we close the public hearing. Uh huh. I'm sorry. Uh huh. My apology. Um. So we have closed. We have closed the public hearing. Um. So we didn't. No, we didn't vote. You on just got a call. You just got a, a call to vote. So. Right. Yeah. So I'm, um, are we ready to call a vote on this? Yep. Uh, Bruce Coldham. Approve. Jim Lumley. I approve. Peggy Schwartz. Approve. Rita Wilcox. I approve. 
Uh, Karen Winter? I approve. And I'm Judy Strayer and I also approve. So. All right, now if anyone um, wants to respond to Peggy's comment, I think we can have that discussion. Well, if it's approved as submitted, you know, then, then I, I certainly uh, respect, respect that it's come to a vote and, and it, it's, not, it's, it's not a huge point of, uh, of contention. If it's not a point of contention at all, it was more curiosity. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I, mean, I think this is uh, this is this is the kind of thing that for a building of this uh, this type and so forth uh, that we like to see uh, the idea that the building is being preserved in a way that's consistent and considerate of its of its existing condition. Mm -hmm. uh, that is that the. Um, the addition that was done subsequently is, I think, arguably been made more consistent with the original uh, mm -hmm. building than the original con extension addition was made to the original building. So I think it's uh, it's 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 not just appropriate in that regard, but it's more than appropriate. It's mm -hmm. uh, it's it's better. It's a better uh, piece of work. So. Okay. Uh, and, uh, and 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 what's being done outside is is um, seems to be fairly minor compared to what's being done inside, which of course is not our purview. So we, uh, it's I would uh, think this is um, uh, thoroughly deserving of uh, of our support uh, mm -hmm. of uh, granting a certificate of appropriateness. Um. If um, if others agree or disagree or um, well, you know, I, I think Bruce could. Uh, I could make, frame a motion. a motion. I think it's also uh, thank Ken, uh, thank Ken Rosenbaum for for putting for adding uh, some additional information of uh, this. Um, and, and, and voicing his support. It's nice to know that the neighbors are mm -hmm. not just tolerating what's happening, but uh, outright uh, uh, endorsing and, and, and advocates for it. It's always lovely when that happens. Mm -hmm. um, oh, not always, but mostly. Uh, so uh, I uh, move that uh, we grant a certificate of appropriateness to the project to private residence at 46 Sunset Avenue uh, in the uh, Sunset uh, um, Lincoln Dis Historical District, finding that it's consistent with the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the objectives as voiced in section, in section 8.1 and 3, uh, I believe, uh, and that mm -hmm. it's uh, consistent with the, uh, with, the, with the buildings in the, in the district. Um, the uh, condition only being that it is uh, that the the work is based on the uh, on the plan submitted by Baker Design Group dated uh, May seventeenth, two thousand and twenty-two. I think that's the motion. Mm -hmm. Second it. Second it. All right, so if there's any, unless there's any other discussion, um, you can call the meeting or call the motion to a vote. Oh, I thought we did vote already. No, that was just to no, close the public just, hearing just, earlier. Oh, just to, oh, I'm sorry to close, okay. Um, yeah, so let's vote on the motion. Uh, Bruce Coldham? I approve. Jim Lumley? Approve. Peggy Schwartz? Approve. Rita Wilcox? I approve. Karen Winter. I approve. I'm Judy Strayer. I also approve. So the certificate it's is unanimous. unanimously. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I just um, have a quick question yeah. if you know who the original architect was. Well, that is a good question. Um, no. I have the Macris listing up here. Um, but it does not list an architect, I don't believe. Okay. 
Thank you. So, Stefan, there were no original drawings. You had to go and do measured drawings and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. So, for um, Stephen and for Rachel, um, and pass the message on to Seth that obviously we'll uh, get the certificate of appropriateness signed and stamped and in your hands. And then um, I assume some of this will need a building permit if you haven't already applied for that. So we'll uh, we'll link up the local historic district certificate with the building permit, and then that'll be your ticket to move forward. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank it's you. Beautiful. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Stop sure. How do I leave? <laughs> <laughs> you can't, Stefan, you're here forever. Oh, maybe because you're sharing your screen if you maybe end share. Ben, I have no idea oh, yeah. why my um, computer cut out and then it came right back on. It wasn't out of batteries or anything. Oh, good. Yeah. All, all of a sudden, I realized you weren't in the meeting. Yeah. So, yeah. All of a sudden, my screen went blank. I um, looked at the batteries they, and then it came back on. Batteries were mm -hmm. fine. I'm on wow. my phone now. But anyway, yes. I didn't, it was nothing mm -hmm. that I knew about. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have other business? Um, I had one more uh, agenda item was just uh, to just um, because we went had that executive session meeting uh, last month. Um, yeah. Part of the state guidelines for executive sessions is that once the matter is decided, you make a public kind of declaration of what was discussed in the executive session. Um, so I was just going to make a few comments about the Amherst Media lawsuit just for the benefit of the public. Thank you. Um, okay, so for and, that and, item. And, and then we can we can say that we agree that you've accurately delivered them or something like that. So it's so it becomes yeah. our our comment, not your comment, I guess. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. So right. um, essentially the Amherst Media um, had filed litigation against the local historic district commission um, uh, uh, claiming that the certificate of appropriateness granted was uh, um, not uh, done correctly um, for various reasons. <clears throat> the lawsuit had been um, pending in court uh, for, I want to say almost a year, about a year. Um, the Amherst Media then agreed to uh, drop the lawsuit, um, dismiss the lawsuit, essentially. Um, and in talking with our town's attorney, we confirmed that the, a few things. First of all, that the uh, clock had not been tolling on the permit the entire duration of the lawsuit. And also because the state of emergency was still in effect between the time the certificate was approved and the lawsuit was first filed that the um, permit has not told at all since the certificate was granted. So Amherst Media at this point has uh, a year to commence commission uh, construction on their project um, and they are eligible to apply for an extension beyond that, beyond that year um, if, if, if they have not commenced construction at that point. Um, so that's kind of the, the point number, uh, one of the main points and, and things we discussed at the executive session was just confirming how the clock has or has not told during that time. And the second one is that um, because the case has been dismissed, Amherst, or Amherst Media is not able to sue or file litigation about the same certificate again, uh, because they, you know, they've dismissed the lawsuit on that ground on those grounds. So um, that's what was discussed at the executive session. And I think hopefully that was an accurate description if anyone else has anything else to add at this time. I'm good. Okay. Um, and all right, well, if that's the case, um, the only other agenda item was just uh, a general public comment period. In yeah. the newspaper article about the about our meeting, um, 
it, it wasn't the Hampshire Gazette. I can't remember the name. Oh, of the yeah. So it was the, there was, yeah. Oh, the reminder. Yeah. The reminder, that was just a mistake on their part or Amherst Media's part. Um, yeah, so I, I came across that as well. There was an article in The Reminder, which is kind of a local independent um, yeah. newspaper, and it had some quotes from Amherst Media's representatives and um, and also just some statements of fact that did not seem accurate based on my, you know, just yeah. exactly what we've heard from our lawyers. So, um, yeah, it's it's too bad that information got out there. I'm not sure where it came from. And not not a very glowing uh, 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 horrible article. <laughs> not a very glowing review of the work of the commission at all. So, mm. so I was saddened to read that. Disheartened. Mm. Is, does this reminder have uh, um, a corrections column? Like yeah, most, I think uh, I... if if they've said something that's inaccurate, they should be uh, hauled over the coals and. Uh, Who's going to do that? Uh, ben, can, uh, can, can you uh, uh, write the editor a, a note uh, asking that they uh, correct the mistaken information? Yeah, I'll, I'll look at it closely again because some of it's um, some of it's you know quoted from someone or from the Amherst Media folks. So I you know if if, it, if they're just reporting a quote, that's one thing, but other facts oh. that they were reporting seemed like they were just incorrect so yeah I'll, I'll look closely at it again and then just make sure that they are aware of some of the mistakes then i also have an unrelated question i was wondering about the house on mcclellan the yellow house that put the um uh, uh built an extension in back and i wondered if we had most of the windows look great, but one of them, I wondered if we had approved and that's because I actually talked with Jennifer and that was her question. Okay. So um, I can look at it again. Um, okay. or, 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 or the windows been installed already? I think some of them have, yeah. Okay. Um, um, I, I, so I heard that somehow the price of the windows had gone up so so terribly that the owner of the house actually went driving around to get used windows to put in. Oh, so that's a good that's a good answer, Karen. Yeah, I would love love it if they had used um, could have find some used windows. Yeah, they did. They they had to apparently. They all of a sudden the the cool. prices of the windows had skyrocketed. Cool. I think that's true with building supplies. Right. And we're okay with uh, them. I mean, is it is it a de minimis change? Do you think, or do or should we just let people freelance? <laughs> That's a good question. Well, Jennifer asked me to check. I haven't actually walked by that house yet. Um, I, I I drive and walk by it every so often just because it's a pretty substantial project, and um, yeah. I, it's been it's been maybe two weeks since I've gone by and I, so I, I haven't noticed windows yet but um I'll, I'll i'll take a look and then compare it to the drawings that were submitted okay. which obviously well actually it's not the drawings that were submitted because if you remember those were just uh right, rectangles right. but he did they did submit a schedule of windows um yeah. to us at, at, as a after the as a condition of the permit so I, i'll compare the windows and I do, yeah i do like that they you could use um, recycled windows. I mean, that's right. a nice concept, but yeah, maybe it's a temporary solution for them too. I don't know. Right. Right. But generally speaking, I think even if even if we would say this is actually less than the de minimis, this is actually an improvement or something like that. However, we would judge it. I think we should um, um, if it is a change, I think we should challenge them on it just so that, uh, because I mean, I can otherwise see that they might be, because they're in the neighborhood and, you know, a year or two or three from now or five, you know, they could say, oh, well, you know, they don't really care that much because, you know, I, I just uh, made, mm -hmm. made this window and I changed it. And they, we wouldn't want folks to uh, mm -hmm. uh, 
be communicating that we are on top of stuff and we don't care even if we even if we even if we think it's a better solution we should tell them so and and mm -hmm. uh, perhaps you know tell them that they really should come and talk uh, to us about such things good um, point rita how much does does it look do you know if it looks a lot different than what was proposed Judy, I actually, this was a letter asking me, and I haven't been by the house. Oh, okay. So I'll, I'll take a walk by it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I actually agree. I mean, I, you know, I, I, I get that window prices have gone up, but also when they when they first talked about it, my question is, they, like, why wouldn't they have ordered their windows right then? So why all of a sudden did the windows go up so much that they had to completely just toss that idea out? And so I, I agree with Bruce that we shouldn't just say, okay, sure. And I think it's just one of the windows, um, the rest conform the rest, to what- The rest conform, okay. Yeah. So okay. I would- So I, I guess it would matter. I guess it would depend on what it, you know, is it within reasonableness yeah. of what was proposed or not, I would think. Um, and, and your letter, uh, Greta, came from Jennifer, right? It wasn't, so it came from somebody who knows what we're talking about. It was Jennifer. Um, I sent Jennifer um, my idea about the, uh, about the wiring and asked her an opinion. And she had some great ideas, which was to get the university when they build the apartments, um, the university village, uh, not village, um, Lincoln Avenue um, to, do underground wiring and make commitment to underground wiring. But she also mentioned that house and asked me if I remembered the original blueprints, which I mean, the original plans, which of course I didn't remember, but I haven't actually walked. It was just this morning. Okay. I think Karen's got a hand up. Um, I, I know that this couple is doing everything that they can to make it environmentally uh, you know, sustainable, they're all, that's the field that they're from. I know that they're stretched financially and they have a deadline. So um, my feeling is they're probably just kind of pushing to get this thing done. And yes, I do think we can challenge them on it, but I think we do have to, this, this is one example of where the commission has to um, not seem like we're putting uh, roadblocks in front of people that are, are are doing something. We have to be careful because I think that particularly, uh, I can't remember his name, the, the husband is uh, very uh, not so easygoing. I mean, he could be, he could be kind of uh, explosive in his anger if he felt that we were putting up a huh. lot of obstacles. So I think we have oh. to be careful. Well, I, and I do I'm, think they're I'm having a worried about that. Second, right? <laughs> People who are explosive um, have to learn not to be explosive in the wrong places, which is almost everywhere. Yeah, I, I I understand that, but what's then what's the point of you know having him submit something and approving it, and then just not coming back to us and saying I couldn't get this particular one. Is this okay? Exactly. You know, instead of just going ahead and doing it. Yeah. You and know, if he's that's, a, that's to me, that's what bothers me about it, I guess. And if he's a, if he's a troublesome guy with anger management problems, I think is all the more reason that we, uh, we hold him to account. Well, maybe we should start off by looking and seeing if we did approve the window or how different it is. Right. I, I do think we should hold them to account, but I think we have to do it in a very diplomatic way. Yeah, I, I think how we do it is gonna be important. I think, yes, he, he does. I, they're very concerned about fitting into the community and making it aesthetically pleasing. So I think they, they're more likely to um, respond positively if we just kind of listen to what's happening. If, if we really do see that it's very different from what we approved, then listen to their side of it and um, yeah, how we do it is what I'm saying. Okay. Jennifer sent me a picture of it, but I don't know how to um, show you the picture. <laughs> um, I would really love to be able to 
go to Cole's. <laughs> I've got something I need to deal with. Uh, okay. and if I could, uh, if, and I've just about still got time to get down there before they shut, um, if we're done. Um, we just have one hand up for public comment. Um, oh, but okay. Bruce, if you need to run, you can, but I'll, I'm just gonna no, call I'll, on uh, uh, Hilda here. Oh, it's Hilda, of course, I'll wait. <laughs> I will be very quick, but there's one issue which I would like very much you consider for the preservation plan update, and it may be in the old one, but I'm like Bruce, I never saw a copy of the original preservation plan, and that is, uh, and this is related to the town hall building behind you, when that was preserved, I believe around 1993, there was a lot of public discussion because public money was used for the restoration and the updating of town hall. And the issue which was approved and implemented was even the windows and all the interior woodwork was preserved or replaced with what was there. And I bring this up for two reasons now that the building, the I guess it was the historic commission approved to be moved over to Baker Street is being to the north, a building that was an older classroom building, I presume was historical. I don't remember they got a preservation um, permit for that one, or do I, do whatever for that. That building, when I drove by a couple of weeks ago, was totally gutted except for the brick exterior. So what I'm asking you to consider for the new preservation plan is that historical interiors like the town hall be preserved in public buildings. You can't make a private person do something they don't want to do, but certainly in public buildings, we should have control over particularly woodwork that cannot re be replaced, number one, because the materials that it was made with are no longer available, like Philippine walnut and imported mahogany, and the type of craftsmanship that in particular went into the woodwork inside of Jones Library. That is a public building and public money is going to be used and that what, whatever goes in that material should match or be compatible with what's, what's there. And what brings this up is I went to the Holyoke Library a few weeks ago with some other people interested in the same issue. And the stairway that connects the 19 to Chestnut woodwork that was saved, the stairway looks like a rusty fire escape. And then I looked at the pictures of what they're proposing for the addition of Jones Library. And it looks like the same material that's gonna turn into what looks like a rusty fire escape. So I just hope that there's some way that this can be considered in the new pres preservation plan that interiors of public buildings can also be historical and worthy of preservation. That's my my diatribe for today. Yeah, I, I that's an interesting. Uh, Hilda probably recognizes that we might not be the uh, the primary instrument for advocating that, although we 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 could and should be one of them. But uh, I don't think we have any public buildings in our historic district, do we? It doesn't mean it as that it expands mean it over time. Well, no, you're right. It isn't, but but I'm just I'm just trying to see where we uh, where our points of leverage are here. Um, it doesn't mean that wouldn't change over time as the historic districts, you know, expanded or what have you. Uh, it also doesn't mean that we couldn't have an opinion on that because I know that we're supposedly not supposedly we are mandated to be interested in the exteriors and not the interiors. But Hilda's point is that this is a maybe we could uh, uh, become interested in the interiors of public buildings. That would be difficult because it would mean that suddenly on odd build, if we had one build one public building in our in our district, the commission would suddenly be interested in 
interiors for that building if 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 the uh, if if our, if the mandate of the historic district commission changed which is not to say that the preservation plan would necessarily change that but I, i'm just trying to get my hand around this because when 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 i was listening to hilda first i thought you know this commission might want to advocate for the expansion of its uh, jurisdiction to the interiors of public buildings um although you know, assuming that we ever had any in our district but that would be difficult for us because we would be occasionally, maybe once every 10 years or more, having to look at interiors where we really had no experience. <laughs> so it might be, it might be very difficult for us to do this. Uh, I, and, and I know that Hilda, you weren't uh, advocating that that become part of our mandate. You were advocating that it uh, be, considered be part of the, in the preservation plan, but I uh, extended your observation to whether or not, uh, because we were talking earlier with Shannon uh, about how the uh, what how what we do might evolve or change, and that was one. That's exactly why I brought it up. Exactly mm -hmm. because I saw what happened in Holyoke, and and when you walk in the door of the new building and you're looking up at the old one, you expect to see something like when you walk in the front door of the Boston Museum of Fine Arts, for example, and see a Renoir at the top. Well, here you see the Renoir at the top, but you got this rusty staircase leading to it, <laughs> you know. But I'm also worried about losing all of that woodwork that um, the original design was to make this into a manor house. And that whole ethos is gonna be gone if we don't crack down. And, but we did crack down on the town hall and we made them do it and it worked. Yeah. That and was, that's uh, the interior of a public building. I mean, you, you can't tell what's old oak in there from new oak because it was all made to look like it was always there. I don't know. Were you around then, Bruce? Or oh, your yeah. Your wife certainly was. Yes, I remember. I had a, a discussion with Dave Keenan about whether he and I and anybody else we could get together would go up into the attic and clear out all the pigeon shit. And then uh, everybody <laughs> brought the hammer down on that because that was even, that was just when pigeon shit was becoming re re recognized as a, as a, um, a, ha a hazardous material. So, yeah, I remember the town hall. Yeah, and it was Vince O'Goner, actually, who won that battle. Vince did win a few battles. He won that one. Yeah, a small proportion of what he started, but that was because he had his finger in a huge number of them. So a small proportion is still a significant number. Mm -hmm. But I mean, the windows, the windows look like the original windows. And, and that would... You have all you have to do is go look at the courthouse in Northampton and see the difference in the fenestration with the big glass. And that, I mean, that was done mega years ago too, the old stone courthouse. But I, I just want to bring it up as an issue because um, a lot of us are trying real hard to preserve some, at least some, if not all, of the woodwork in the inside of Jones Library because it's irreplaceable. Both yeah. because of the wood and the craftsmanship is if if anybody has that craftsmanship, it's gonna be very expensive to replicate if ever. And once it's gone, it's gone. And I got people lining up at the dump for when it gets there so they can take it. You know? <laughs> I'm not joking. No, I hope they're the right people. And I hope it doesn't get to the dump. We can just uh, salvage it right there in in place with a with a contractor. But as I say, it's nice to it's nice to preserve that stuff and reuse it uh, strategically, or even keep it for future bashing. Okay. Well, thank you for listening to my my diatribe, but to my rant, the daily rant. <laughs> Pleasure. Thank you for thinking that way. I think it's a nice. It's wonderful for the town. Yeah. Thank you. Well, we spent. I've spent at least the last sixty-two years thinking that way, I and mean, I I inherited that when I got married. But I grew up with some of it. Okay. Um, Thank you, Hilda. Um, you, we, we will make sure set. that that gets to Shannon, right? That 
that suggestion of Hilda's gets. Yeah, to I, I just made a note. And of then that. into yeah. the uh, into the thinking for the new preservation plan. Exactly. Yep. Good. Um, I tried saving the woodwork for the North Amherst Library to recycle it, and they said no. I lost that one. Oh. Ah, uh, gonna be cherry. It's not gonna be chestnut. I don't mean just no uh, oak. <clears throat> All right. Um, I think we just need to uh, set our next meeting date. I don't have any pending applications right now, so we can okay, that's maybe okay. do something for early July, maybe. Um, I think the fourth is a holiday. Is that on a Monday or no? We celebrate. Yeah, the July 4th is a Monday, so we have that'll be a holiday. Yeah. You don't want to do it then? <laughs> Wouldn't be many applicants. That would be cool. It'd be very quick. Yeah. Okay. But we could say maybe July 11th. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good for the 11th. I, I okay. think I might be away, but I don't have I don't have that calendar here. Um, okay. But my guess is that at any time someone will be away over the summer. So right. I can send you a note when I uh, I check it. Okay. Um, I'm so here. We'll, okay. Judy, does that work for you? That works for me. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I also just realized I'm I'm saddened to say it, but um, I sorry I didn't realize it sooner, but I think this Jim that is this now uh, is this your last meeting with the commission? I think it has to be, unfortunately. <laughs> Oh right, because not of, until he's replaced usually. Well, no, we've we've lost folks before they got replaced. Yeah, um, but it does mean Dude. that uh, in order to have a quorum, if Jim's no longer on, uh, four out of five of us have to be uh, available. Mm -hmm. It's going to make it more difficult. Yeah, and we're. I do want to say that uh, it's it's really been great working with everybody, and I'm. Sad to see that uh, you know I'm I'm, I'm not going to be able to join you anymore, but Aww. at the same time I know you're going to continue on with the good work. Ben, do they have a replacement? Uh, yeah. Um, we have uh, we put out the word to the Pioneer Valley Realtor Association, um, and we we have a few names of people who are interested, and then I think of those few people only two submitted activity forms. Um, so then we're kind of waiting until there's, uh, um, so we have like two potential realtors and then uh, hopefully we're just also want to, we, we have another vacancy to fill from Jennifer's seat as well. So we, we're waiting a bit to, to we hold the in interviews. Can I yeah. just ask a question? Does it have to be a realtor or a licensed real estate person? By the state uh, does not have to be licensed i mean you have to be a licensed real every they're all we're all licensed it's just okay. realtor is a professional association but it doesn't include all the practicing agents okay uh now we're just wondering if that would broaden your search a little bit because i know there are a number of agents working in the local area that are not realtors. Mm -hmm. Of course, they're not going to be recommended by Pioneer Valley, like I was. Yeah, it says, I'm looking at the uh, bylaw right now. It says one member from the board of realtors covering Amherst. So okay, what, one member from a nominee uh, from the board yeah. of realtors. All right. So I don't really know what that means in terms of <laughs> licensing. But I think, well, Jim, what does it mean? Um, is that the Amherst bylaw or the state law? That's the town's bylaw. Yeah, I've I've always just interpreted it to mean um, like I reach out to the whatever the local chapter of you know some realtor group. But so I assume that was the Pioneer Valley Realtor Association. Well, it's it's going to cover the yeah. majority of agents, but not necessarily all. Okay. Yeah, but once again, uh, if we if we don't. Uh, follow the the letter of the bylaw and somebody at some point wants to challenge a decision we've made 
they're they're very good at finding ways in which uh, arguably one of us might be an illegitimate uh, host, and and uh, and you and I are the are the ones that are obviously uh, um, more vulnerable to that kind of challenge. Well. I, I can understand the council's position because I was in, live in Pelham and uh, it really should be, of course, an amorous person, preferably somebody that lives in the district. But apparently it doesn't have to be. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's supposed to be at least one person from each district. So we, we meet that threshold yeah. at least. i just ask everybody what, I guess, as somebody who doesn't live in one of the districts, um, I, I don't. Yeah, I know you don't, but you're here because of you're the architect representative. Oh, oh that's true. Yeah. <laughs> you know, oh. that, so I, I, I just guess I, I, to me, it smacks of almost elitism to think that pe other people in town don't have the same um, concern for historic preservation, I guess. It's you know, you it's... have people from the district, but there should be, you know, other people from the town who have, you know, the other views, I guess, is what I'm saying. And I don't know, I just, I guess I just thought, I, I, this is the first time I felt on this committee that not being from the district mattered. And... But I think, Ben, you said we need one person from each district. That's what the uh, bylaw requires, right? Didn't you say that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, right. So, but, so that's that's so it doesn't it doesn't matter beyond that. I don't. No, it doesn't think. matter. Yeah. But but it does. Does somebody who's not from the district, do you take their views as seriously? I yes. guess my question. Yeah. Well, yes, I'm sure we do. Absolutely, yeah. I hope so. Otherwise, my views are not being taken seriously as as seriously, and neither. No, I I think there's an argument for having people. I've, I've perhaps felt that it's there's an argument for having people who are in the district simply because they're more readily able to go and look at and report on, on what's no, going on. But, but no, there should be people. Far, from yes, that that means that means one or two, which is uh, at least in, in the past we've had we've had up maybe five, I suppose, but certainly no more than that. And now we've got three and three out of six, which is a healthy uh, spread. I, I don't think that you should feel in any way uh, diminished by living outside the district, because as you said, you've got, you're the, uh, you're the, 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 uh, the, the, the spirit for expanding the district. You know, you've got a role uh, in beyond just being a member of the commission, uh, put an interest in uh, other parts of the town, which may uh, want to be included at some point. So I think that's, that's I don't have a, I don't, I don't think it matters. Okay. I think it's a plus, as you said, other views. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Well, Jim, thank you very much. I've uh, really enjoyed uh, the friendship that we've developed in the six years that we've, uh, and uh, Jim and I occasionally before COVID would sit and have coffee before the meetings, you know, when we used to, used to meet in town hall and uh, uh, I would bring my sketchbook or he would bring, because we both draw things. So uh, I've missed that over the past couple of years. Um, uh, but it was uh, very enjoyable to be uh, serving on this committee with you. Thank you, Bruce. Well said. And, and we look forward, uh, Jim, to continuing to work with you and the study group. So we'll yes. keep that going so we can still be a part. <laughs> we can keep you a part of our group. And uh, hopefully we'll see you Thursday. Yes, great. All well, right. With that, uh, perhaps move to adjourn and uh, until the, the 11th. Oh, there is one other thing that's probably should be said on that. Uh, 
because uh, by if the town votes as we expect it will, the council, the Karen and I will be appointed to the planning board with our, our terms will start in July. Uh, if we were imagining that we would get off this commission uh, as we get on to the planning board, that would leave this commission unable to function. So I think I will at least commit to um, staying on this commission as long as it, um, I am necessary to create a quorum. Good. Thank you. Yeah, that, that, uh, <laughs> that crossed my mind as well, too, with you and Karin joining the planning board. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, we'll, we'll double down on recruiting members for the vacancy so we can get those spots filled. Yeah, yeah. please. With that, I move to adjourn. Second. I'll vote by clicking the red button. Bye, all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. you. Bye. Next month. Yep. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.